Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. This week I want to talk to you about free software and also a really good app and also what's new on our tutorials. So one thing I just do want to clear up is this is an iPhone and my dad has gone on at me about the fact that I keep mentioning iPhone and their apps. Well actually he's got an iPod Touch and that's why he's a little bit annoyed that I keep mentioning this. So I just want to clear something up that the iPhone and the iPod Touch are actually very similar. So most of the apps do work and most of the features are pretty much the same except for the fact that of course you can't make phone calls on the iPod Touch. You also don't get roaming data such as 3G and also there's not a camera on it. Other than that they're very similar. You're going to find it's very similar as well for the iPad as well when I mentioned some of the things there too. Hopefully in the UK we'll know very soon when that's coming out and also how much it's going to cost. So that's the iPhone, so when I say that, sometimes you need to translate that to iPod Touch. Okay, so that's that out of the way, so now on to the free software. And you're probably hoping that I'm going to tell you about free software that's available, such as Microsoft Office and where you can get it for free. This is actually legitimate free software, and you'll be pleased to know that there's a lot of software out there that is free, such as antivirus software, software for firewalls as well, and also things to replace Office and many more, including things to back up as well. And these apply to Macs and PCs. So for antivirus software on a PC, you'll find AVG is very good. It is free. I use it myself. In fact, all of the software I mention here is free. And I do also have to mention, unfortunately, that anything you try is at your own risk. But um, I do use all of this and it is actually working very well. On a Macintosh, I use iAntivirus, again free and it's very good. For a firewall on my PC, I use Zone Alarm and it's also very good. Bear in mind that is not for businesses, that is actually for personal use only, but still very good. And for Office, you can actually use OpenOffice. It's free and it has basically a word processor just like Word. Excel, PowerPoint, and even a database as well. And you'll be hard pressed to actually notice much of a difference between them. Okay, slightly different look, but as you can see, very, very similar indeed. It is compatible with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access. There's also a drawing package on there too. So very handy, it's available for the Mac and the PC, free, and it is compatible with all of those. You can save files in any of those formats and open them as well. And it is actually very useful for the fact that a lot of people I know are converting over to Mac. And because of it, they're saying that they haven't got any Office software available. They'd have to go out and buy it. Well, OpenOffice is absolutely fine for it. Just about all of them have got that instead. Some of them have gone and bought Office. But this is very good. You can have it as well as having Office so you can actually compare them. But you will notice that they're actually very similar. For backing up, on the PC, I use back to zip which is very handy and it's back with the number two zip and you can find it at free-backup.info slash back to zip .html. On the Mac I do use to backup as well. Again very very useful stuff. If you want to create PDFs sometimes that can be a bit costly the software. There is Qt PDF that is free and it's available for Windows. Very useful download that. Just do a Google search on Qt PDF. If you need to convert something from PDF to Word, there is pdftoword.com. Very useful website, does work with Mac or PC again, and anything you've got as a PDF will convert to Word. Sometimes, depending on the formatting that it was in the PDF, it doesn't always do a great job, but it will help. So you'll be able to then say cut and paste and reformat the document that you then get in Word. Very handy. As I said, I've tried all of these and they do actually work. If you're looking to redesign your office or your home, then you might find something called floorplanner.com. Very good that you can use these things in two dimensions or three dimensions, 2D or 3D. And again, it's free and very useful. So take a look at that as well. I will be bringing more tips on free software as we go through more and more podcasts. So just keep a listen out here and there when I come across really good stuff. If you've got a really good bit of free software that you like, please drop me a line via the website and I'll give it a mention. Now, what's new on the apps this week? Well, the app that I really like is one called Red Laser. What it does is it uses the camera like a barcode reader. And for that, you can then use it like with this jam here, this strawberry jam. And if I take my iPhone, I can actually get it to using this, take a photograph of the barcode. And what it does is it translates it into the number that the barcode is and sends it off to find you 
other alternative places where you can buy it and at different costs, hopefully, maybe cheaper somewhere else. I understand that in the new version as well, which I'm just about to download, it will even tell you allergen information, such as whether it's got nuts, gluten, egg, that kind of thing in it. So very handy. Unfortunately, it's not free, but it is very good. You'll probably see people walking around the supermarket now thinking, why are they taking photographs of barcodes? But I do use it. I have found some things cheaper on there. Not everything is on there yet. It's a fairly new app, so the database is building, but I have found it very useful. So what do we have new in our tutorials this week? As you know, I'm adding tutorials all the time, and this week I've got some on Excel and Access. For Excel, I've added some called Naming Cells and Ranges, which is a very useful feature, and also a very useful tool is Scenarios, so check both of those out. On Access, I'll show you how to add a combo box, so you can do a very quick search for your information on your form and also how to add buttons to your form. There are loads and loads of tutorials on there and in fact someone asked me today if I could add one so that they could know how to total up in Excel. That tutorial is already there so go and have a look. There are loads of them there. If you think they're useful please pass it on. I'm finding more and more people every day finding it useful. So check those out, they're the tutorials and you'll see they're broken down into different sections on the website. If you do have any suggestions for tutorials, because these are for you, then please drop me a line via the website, just click on contact, fill in the form and I will get an email with your request and I'll try and do something about it. So thanks for watching, next week I'm going to look at speeding up your computer, I'm not just talking PCs here, I'm talking Macs too. So thanks very much for watching once again and see you next week.